can't buy It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a beach If you find the sand And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here live from IRCE with InspiredInsider.com. We're here with Zinrello, uh, Jai Rawat, and uh, tell us a little bit about what Zinrello does. So Zinrello is a platform for loyalty rewards and referral marketing platform. So we work with a number of retailers to enable customer loyalty and word of mouth referrals. Word of mouth referrals helps them acquire new customers and the customer loyalty program helps increase the lifetime value of those customers. So why did you start this, Jay? The company was started as Shop Socially about uh, eight years ago. And at that point, the observation was that uh, with the advent of social media, uh, the marketing has been democratized, right? Because every customer has now also become a marketer. And that was the observation yeah. that we had at that time. You're a smart guy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we, we try to figure out that how can we help retailers leverage the power of social media so that their customers can become advocates, right? Um, so that's, that was the original uh, thesis behind the company and the name was Shop Socially because of that. And then over time we started looking at how does this social media and interaction also impact uh, customer loyalty. And what we found was that the more the customers engage with the brand, the more loyal they are, right? So yeah. it's not just about buying stuff, but even in between their purchases, if they are uh, sharing pictures on Instagram or if they are tweeting about the brand and so on, uh, then they become a lot more loyal, right? So we started incorporating some of those ideas into the loyalty program, and that's how the company has over time transformed into Zinrello. So why the name change? I actually like, I like Zinrello, but I like Shop Socially also. So Shop Socially um, was very, you know, the name very specifically talked about just social shopping, right? And as I said, over time we started looking at the impact on loyalty, etc., as well. And uh, the name Shop Socially just did not quite reflect that focus. And what happened was, to be very honest, when we when we talked to the retailers who did not know about Shop Socially, uh, they would they would they would um, bucket us under mm. uh, a, a company that helps them with social media posts. You're getting a, a pigeonholed in the wrong direction. You, you got it exactly right. So we are just getting sent to the intern who manages their Facebook page. <laughs> they said, no, no, that's not the person we want to talk to. So that was a little bit of a challenge because the name just did not reflect what I we gotcha. did. gotcha. So where does Zinrello come from, the, the net name? How'd you come up with that? Well, let me first put it this way, that somebody much younger than me in the company came up with that name. <laughs> Zinrello, uh, I couldn't have thought about that. But anyway, uh, so Zing, Zinrello is a combination of the words Zing, referral, and loyalty. Okay. Who's the ideal customer to be using Zinrello? Basically, any company that is looking to either acquire new customers through word of mouth or they are looking to build customer loyalty. So in the first case, I would say any company that is selling products that are somewhat exciting. You know, if you are selling printer cables, very, it's very unlikely that you are going to get any referrals for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that, that would not be a good customer right. for... You never for know, but yeah, probably not. Unlikely, right? Um, and so like who, is, who is a good uh, case study that you like to, to talk about that uses Zinrella? Sure. So we have a number of different customers. Uh, there's a company called Predator Nutrition in, in UK, actually. Okay. Um, and uh, they are seeing about 70% increase in repeat sales and about 33% wow. in average order value. Uh, we have company, you know, so these are some of the results that I'm openly able to talk about. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to a number of other customers who right. don't let us yeah. share their numbers. Uh, but across the board, uh, on an average, what we see is about 80% increase in repeat sales we see about 33% increase in average order value, oh. and we see about 2.4x increase in revenue per customer through this program. Yeah. How does Predator use it? So Predator is using it to, um, to let the users earn rewards for a variety of different activities. So if you create an account, um, you sign up for their email a newsletter, if you buy a product, if you write a review, you, know, you can earn loyalty reward points for all of those different activities, and the program has been incredibly successful where you know, there are millions of points being awarded every month and being redeemed as well. Yeah. So what's best practices 
for using loyalty? Because you could give free product, you give discounted product. What have you seen that works for a company actually using Zinrella? So there are really three components, right? The first component is designing the right program, yeah. right? So you need to think about what do you want to call this program, which activities you want to reward, do you want to create loyalty tiers or not, what redemption options you want to create, et cetera. Uh, the second component is promoting the program itself. Just because you've created a good program doesn't mean that the customers will come to know about it. Yeah. What is a good program like with the, the, the loyalty rewards? What should people, what have you seen works? Like for Predator, what do they do to, get more people buying more? So what they've done a good job of is they have integrated the program very nicely in their web website. So for example, you know when you are uh, on a product page, it clearly tells you that, hey, if you write a review, you can get 100 points for that. So at the time you're buying the product, you know that if you come back and write a review, you can get some additional loyalty points. So that kind of you know integration, deep integration in the website, really helps promote the program and gets a lot more engagement. Yeah. I saw some other companies, I think, on your TV screen, like other big companies. Like Jelly Belly was on there. That's what, correct. And uh, how do they use it? So Jelly Belly is doing the same thing. They are awarding users for a variety of different activities. Yeah. Uh, you know, things like writing reviews and, and, and creating accounts and such. Uh, so the overall concept is try and create 360 degree engagement with the customers. You know, keep them engaged even when they're not buying, right? And the more they get engaged, the more likely they're like to to buy from you again when they're ready to make a purchase. So Jay, why did you start this company? I mean, I know you hit, you hail from uh, Iowa State with a computer computer science background. That's correct. So you have a pretty technical background. Why did you start this? Well, this happens to be my fourth startup. Uh, so I've been in Silicon Valley for over 25 years now. Wow. Uh, I started my you first company. Uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I started my first company in 1999, uh, which was acquired by AOL in 2001. I did my jail what time. What company was that? Uh, it was a company called Obongo. Uh, we did online identity management and e-wallet company. Uh, so, as I said, that company was acquired by AOL in 2001. I did my jail time there for a couple of years. <laughs> and, and I decided that I'm not... What do you really think? <laughs> uh, I, I, I just realized after that... How that long did they get you for? Was it a year or two? Two, two, two years. Two I was years. there for okay. two years and then I said, you know, that was two years More too much, enough. right? Okay. I, I just realized that after having done a startup, that I just could not work in a big company again. So after that, I'd done a couple of other startups uh, after Obongo, and this is my fourth startup. So I just feel that, you know, I, I just, I'm just so happy. So what was after Obongo? I'm sure, so after Obongo, there's a company called Airtight Networks. Uh, it's actually just changed the name to Mojo Networks. Uh, so it's a um, Wi-Fi access and security company. Uh, so they're doing pretty well, hopefully on their way to IPO at some point. Um, and then after that, I did uh, another company in comparison shopping space. Mm -hmm. And then this is the fourth startup. So Zinrello. So why Zinrello then as the fourth one? Why did you start this one? So I started the company, as I said, because I saw that there was a need for me like You saw that with the comparison shopping? Like is that, did you see something there that brought you Zinrello? Not really. So comparison shopping, the t at the time we started that, about uh, within a year into the company, Google changed their algorithms. So the comparison shopping business basically went dead. Hmm. You know, all the comparison shopping companies, the traffic just went to zero. And we kind of saw the writing on the wall much earlier, so that company did not go anywhere. We actually had to shut it down. And that was very good that we did. Yeah. Um, and after that, I was just consulting for some time and I was trying to figure out what's next. And as I said, you know, when the social media came about, I saw the opportunity because what I saw was that most retailers, the way they were using social media was they were just using it as yet another advertising channel. So they're saying, oh, okay, you know, I got Facebook, let me just advertise on Facebook. But if you think about it, the real power of social is not, B2C, it's not B2C, it's C2C, right? right? You go to Facebook in the morning to see what your friends are doing, right. not what Macy's has to say, right? right? So that is the real power of social. True. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the, nobody was really leveraging the power of consumer-to-consumer -consumer conversation, and that was the reason behind starting Shop Social. So, Jay, what's a big milestone that you're especially proud of with Zinrella so far? Uh, that we reached profitability with uh, very little investment. So, in my, on all my previous startups, we took significant investment capital yeah. uh, before we could reach profitability. Uh, here, we have raised very little money, and we have been able to get to profitability very quickly because the product is just incredibly strong and um, we, got, we got a big customer base. What's uh, the future 
What's uh, on the horizon for Zinrella? What are you working on now? So uh, with Zinrella, we are going to be focusing on just these two products, loyalty and referral, and we just are going to create the best possible products uh, in, in, in the world. Uh, and uh, you know, the focus is just to grow the business at this point. Yeah. One last question. I want to point people first towards where should they check out more? What website should they go to, social media? Uh, so the best place to go is zinrello.com. That's our website, and all the information is over there. Yeah. Yes. You seem like, the last question, Jay, you're smiling because you don't know what I'm going to ask, but um, you seem like a very driven entrepreneurial person. Where does that come from? What is your background like? Where did you grow up? So I grew up in a very small town in India. Mm. And uh, you know, came, came, come from a very middle class family and really had to struggle. I mean, when I came to the US, I basically had to take a loan to buy my plane ticket. Wow. And I didn't have money to even buy the plane ticket, right? So that's how I came to US and had no money with me. So I knew that I had to be a self-made man. Why did you come? Uh, so I came here to do my master's in yeah. computer science. Um, and at least at that time, the opportunities in India were not quite as good as they are these days. Uh, I came here back in 91, so you know the computer computer industry in India at that time was practically non-existent. You know, there was, was really not too much. Even in the U.S., it was, it's early on. It was very early yeah. on, exactly. So, but still, you know, the opportunity here was much nicer, and you know, uh, and you know, it's like the American dream, right? It is. Uh, the, the great thing about America is that, look, I mean, if you if you're driven, if you are are really keen to succeed, you can succeed, mm -hmm. right? So, so you took a loan to get a plane ticket to go to come to the US. That is correct. So what's some of the other things? Because people see, okay, exited companies for successful startups. They don't see the struggle. So talk what was that some of that early on struggle after you took that loan to get a plane ticket? <laughs> so you asked me why Iowa State, right? And yeah. and the, one of the reasons was because I was getting full scholarship to study there. Yeah. Because I couldn't afford to pay the tuition. Yeah. So you know I applied to various schools and I got full scholarship for some of, some of the schools and Iowa State was one of them and it was a good college as well. Uh, so that was one of the reasons to choose that. Um, and uh, yeah, so after I completed my master's, I came to Silicon Valley. I started working there. And uh, in India, I went to um, IIT, uh, which is you know very hard to get into. And I really had to struggle and work hard to get into IIT. But one thing that it taught me was that if I set my mind to some, do something, I can really achieve it. Yeah. So I started working in the semiconductor space in, 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 in the Silicon Valley. And around 99, when I saw the internet revolution was happening, I switched from You're semiconductor. Right in the heart of the internet revolution. Right. And I, and I switched from semiconductor to internet, and I had knew nothing about internet at that point. But I started a company anyways. No one else did either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I literally had to just uh, work on, on the weekends and uh, 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 evenings. I was really studying while I was working full time. I was trying to learn all this new stuff, new internet stuff over evenings and weekends. I educated myself and then I started a company which became successful. So, you know, it's been, it's been an interesting journey and um, it's, you know, it's hard being an entrepreneur. It's because you're, you're always um, spending time away from your family and your kids yeah. and, and always working hard. Yeah. You know, it's overpaid, uh, oh, underpaid and overworked. Yes. <laughs> exactly. um, but it's fun. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That's amazing. True American dream. Everyone should check out Zinrello.com. Zinrello.com here with Jay RC. Thanks, Jay. Thank you so much. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.